This week, a rare event, the birth of a walrus and its almost immediate demise. A baby Sumatran elephant born at the safari park west of Jakarta is bound to make you sigh. If you like a wedding, we've got an unusual one. Two donkeys tie the knot. A raccoon gets to the end of a wild ride on a pig in Germany. And of course, no program would be complete without a fashion parade for cats. All that and more coming right up on Animalia. And then one more time, out and back in. And sometimes, if you want to do it four times... Dad. All right, come on, boy. Well, you know what? If I ever meet a sea turtle, I'll ask him. After I'm done talking to the shark, okay? Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, wait to cross. Hold my fin, hold my fin. When the hit aquatic animation film Finding Nemo first hit the screens, it caused a tidal wave of sales in pet stores. It seems children across the world are falling for the little clownfish Nemo. The movie tells the story of Nemo's dad's adventure-filled search for his lost son, abducted from the ocean only to end up in a dentist's fish tank. Pet stores report an upsurge in sales and inquiries about clownfish of between 30 and 50 percent. The real-life Nemos sell for around $15, quite cheap for a fish, but the cost of keeping it in a fully equipped tank is far more expensive. Buying Nemo as a pet is a far cry from buying a simple goldfish and plopping it into a bowl of water. Do you know where my dad is? Honey, your dad's probably back at the pet store. Pet store? Yeah, you know, like, uh, I'm from Bob's Fish Mart. Pet Palace. Fishyrama. Mail order! eBay. So, which one is it? I'm from the ocean. Ah, the ocean. The ocean! <gasps> ah! <laughs> What are you talking about? You're showing me which way the boat went. A boat? Hey, I've seen a boat. It passed by not too long ago. It, it went, um, this way. It went this way. Follow me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The clownfish is a saltwater fish, so they have a lot of requirements. They're not like goldfish. If they're not taken care of properly, they'll die. Meet Igor and Nikolai, a father and son team of walruses that every day entertains visitors to the Harderwijk Dolphinarium in the Netherlands. And those people thought they had good seats. Europe's biggest sea mammal park has something to celebrate. For the second time in its history, one of their walruses has given birth to a healthy baby. Although the baby almost got crushed between her heavyweight mother and the bars of the birthing cage. After a pregnancy of 15 months, 21-year-old walrus mother Olga gave birth to a healthy baby boy called Boyka. The birth of the baby took about 40 minutes, a short time for the birth of a walrus. Measuring almost one metre long, Boyka, which means fighter in Russian, weighed 50 kilos at birth and already has a great moustache. Now that's a nice picture. Trainers in the park, who are monitoring the little one around the clock, said Boyka was quick to find his mother's milk and that he's growing fast. Olga's a very good mother. She gives a lot of milk and she's doing a great job with her son. It was the second time that Olga gave birth in captivity. Eight years ago, she also gave birth to Nikolai, seeing here doing his daily routine with Igor for the visitors. Soon, they'll be joined by Olga and Boyka.
Say bye bye, guys. Bye bye. With heat waves sweeping over Turkey, animals at Izmir Zoo are receiving an extra splash of water to help cool them down. The zoo animals' daily extra splashes of water are being organized to save them from suffering from the heat. Most cats dislike water, but uniquely, the Sumatran tiger, as you can see, loves its cooling property and languishes in the stream of soothing H2O. The tiger is one of the most feared animals in the world. That is probably because it's the largest of the felids, although the Sumatran tiger is smaller than the Indian tiger. The tiger is known for its stripes, and the Sumatran tiger has stripes that are a little closer to each other than some other subspecies of tiger. With an average temperature of 40 degrees Celsius, Izmir has become one of the hottest cities in Turkey. So, if you're feeling the cold at the moment, settle back and remember the heat of last summer and think of hot days to come. This is the Safari Park, a zoo west of Jakarta. Visitors can drive through the park and view the animals from their vehicles. Besides elephants, the safari park has pythons, tigers, leopards, gorillas, deer and lemurs. The safari park is home to seven male and 24 female elephants. But they've had a new star attraction in the shape of Enul, a newborn elephant calf. Enul is the third calf born to the safari park's 33-year-old Sumatran elephant, Linda. She arrived two months early, but weighing in at 60 kilograms, she's in good condition. The early delivery caught some of the keepers at the zoo by surprise. She was born early in the morning, and they weren't prepared for the delivery because an elephant's gestation period is supposed to be 20 months, and this was only 18 months. The safari park decided to name her Enul after the famous Indonesian singer and dancer known for her wild durations during her performances. Although the similarity, I must admit, escapes me at present. The park's elephant breeding center is continuing its breeding program to encourage local visitors and enhance their exchange program with local and international zoos. Elephants are amazing animals. They're incredibly social creatures who have lasting memories and can communicate over long distances through long-range sound waves. The Sumatran elephant is a subspecies of the Asian elephant. It's the biggest land animal in Indonesia and is found only on the island of Sumatra. They're found in the island's forests at altitudes of 1,750 meters, but they prefer to live in lowland forests. They also have a large home range. They move from the mountain area to the coastal lowland forest during the dry season and then retreat to the hills when the rainy season comes. Factors such as forest fires and human resettlement cause the fragmentation of the island's elephant habitat. Iraq, 16 thoroughbred horses have been returned to the Jadriya Equestrian Club in the grounds of the University of Baghdad. They've been removed from the club shortly before the war and taken to a race course in the city. But then concerns grew for their safety and over the refusal of those holding them to release them. The emergency relief team of the International Fund for Animal Welfare and Brendan Whittington-Jones of the Thula Thula Executive Game Reserve of South Africa are providing assistance with the rehabilitation of the horses at the stables.
The IFAW vet, Jason Thrupp, will carry out an assessment of all horses before deciding what care may be required. Inevitably, illness or injury occurs and expert care is needed to rehabilitate the horses. The emergency relief team and Mr. Whittington Jones are currently working at Baghdad Zoo. The recovery of the horses was organized by the US Army 354 Civil Affairs Division. During the former regime, the horses were given good care. Their prices reach up to 20 to 25 million Iraqi dinar, or 15,000 to 16,000 US dollars. It seems the horses were better cared for than a lot of people under the last regime. This is a shopping mall in Indonesia. Dressed in elaborate costumes by their owners, 20 cats have taken part in the first ever competition to mark the launch of the Indonesia Cat Association. Chico, a 10-month-old Persian, slept through most of the event, but woke up a winner. Nested comfortably in a baby cart and fully clad in baby clothes, Chico took the trophy for best dressed cat. Cats were dressed in outfits ranging from baby to Formula One driver as the owners took them up and down the catwalk. Some looked a little confused. Others seemed oblivious to the commotion they were causing in the shopping mall. The judges total up the points, taking into account innovation, style, presentation and flair. It appears the owners were a lot more excited by the whole affair than the actual participants. The audience was spellbound. Competition was fierce, but it seems nothing got near to Chico for sheer class. Chico's owner admitted that her cat's favorite pastime, sleeping, was most likely due to her being overweight and that she needed exercise. Perhaps a few trips up and down the catwalk without the baby cart might get the model figure in trim for next year. But I don't think so. But if you're more of a dog person, then fear not. In Japan, the Tokyo Puchi Fashion Show has hit the catwalk with the latest summer-autumn canine collection. Top terrier models, dachshunds in designer clothes and chic chihuahuas dressed in their best wowed the crowd assembled at Tokyo's Mitsukoshi department store pet corner. Even if some of the pets were not completely under control, on the catwalks their owners were happy their dogs had got into the limelight. And the audience seemed a lot more enthralled than they were for the cats. Many of the diminutive dog fashion brands from Japanese and Italian designers, unheard of in the fashion world for men and women, have price tags ranging from 2,500 to 8,500 yen, or 21 to 72 US dollars. The dogs may on occasion look uncomfortable in the outfits, but their owners express great affection for their charges. That may be so, but it looks to me like the canine mannequins just can't wait to get out into the fresh air and do what dogs love to do. These owners don't seem to have too much of a stranglehold on reality.
Meanwhile, yoga seems to be stretching its boundaries with a new class that brings dog owners and their pets together on a rubber mat for half an hour. A New York gym called Crunch Fitness has started a free half-hour class, Rough Yoga, where the well-known downward dog position seems to have been made just for its members. Susie Teitelman and a two-year-old Cocker Spaniel Coley head the class, where people and their furry friends get together and de-stress and bond. But dogs will be dogs, and often pet owners have to swiftly detangle from a difficult yoga position to run after their wandering, barking dog and bring it back to the mat. The class incorporates most of the traditional poses, and the dogs are just worked in in clever, discreet ways. So how did the idea come to Susie? Well, she says that yoga came from the animals, if you think back all the way to the beginning. The beginning of what, though? One of the owners who's attended all of the rough yoga sessions says she's noticed that the class has a remarkably calming influence on her cocker spaniel, Isaac. Yoga for dogs, sometimes called doga, has taken hold with pet lovers beyond New York. On bookshelves now is doga, Yoga for Dogs from Chronicle Books. The book, based on the fact that some of yoga's best known positions are based on the movements of dogs, has tips on practicing yoga with your dog. And yoga guru Bruce Van Horn, who has a book Yoga for Pets and the People Who Love Them, says he's noticed with his own dog that the relaxation of yoga can rub off. Susie has a practical approach to the class she inspired. At the end of the class at Madison Square Park, as the owners recite OM to relax, the dogs have their own way of cooling off. And thanks everyone for coming. Namaste. A quick dip in the pool with their fellow furry friends is a perfect end to the rough yoga class. Mind where you step there, lady. A small zoo outside Berlin has just got three new inhabitants, none older than a few weeks and none born at the zoo. Three baby raccoons are currently being raised by their adoptive father, the head of Bad Zorro Zoo, after the furry animals were abandoned by their mother. Local authorities first delivered Pino to his new home after the male raccoon was found almost starved to death. Two weeks later, two more raccoons joined Pino. They too were abandoned by their mother, and the three raccoons are now being bottle-fed by Hartmut Richter. Looking at the cute little animals, one does wonder whether raccoons could be kept as pets. Hartmut said they'd have to have a bigger cage and something to where they could retreat at night. They're a little bit like cats in that they can be trained a little. In fact, raccoons are amongst the most intelligent of wild animals. Raccoons were originally brought to Central Europe and bred for the fur trade. They later established themselves in the wild and have become a nuisance stealing fruit. According to animal conservationists, some 100,000 raccoons live in Germany, which can be problematic since they can spread rabies. Although looking at Pino, it's hard to believe he could do anything harmful at all. The common name raccoon comes from the Indian word arakoon, meaning he scratches with his hands. Adult raccoons may be up to three foot long and weigh up to 30 pounds. They have a black face mask and ring tail. Their fur is long and dense, a grizzled brown and black color. Although raccoons are flesh eaters and have long canine teeth, their molar teeth are adapted for a varied diet, which includes more than just meat. Looking at this scene, it could soon mean shoes, too. They're most active at night, and their nightly travels depend upon where food is available and the weather conditions. The home range of an adult male is about one mile in diameter, although it expands in size during the breeding season. Adult males tend to be solitary, but family groups are quite social and will feed and den together into the fall. 
As family units grow, raccoons become increasingly solitary. The young leave the area where they're born between the fall and spring of their first year and may travel 75 miles or more before settling in a new location. We do hasten to add, however, that the back of a wild pig is not the usual mode of transportation for raccoons. Well, there's nothing much cuter than newborn lion clubs, and visitors may soon have their first sneak peek at two litters of these precious cubs at the Beijing Badaling Safari Animal World. Though very sleepy, the cubs are thriving, and it won't be long until they're ready to meet the public. Four of these are only two days old, and they have yet to fully discover the world around them. And two weeks ago, another lioness gave birth to five cubs, one too many to support by herself. Female lions have only four teats, but this mother lion has given birth to five little ones. So now the park has to urgently find a dog as a substitute mother to feed the fifth cub with her milk. That's the only way of keeping it alive. Offers are apparently coming in from all over China from people willing to donate their dog as a foster mother. Meanwhile, the safari park takes pride in its achievements in breeding lions. They've already succeeded in breeding almost 100 and now have a total of 200 lions at the wildlife park. The reproduction and survival rate of the lions here is extremely high, and as you can see, they soon grow out of the cuddly stage. Residents in India's southern city of Bangalore have staged a grand donkey wedding which they hope will please the Hindu gods. Two donkeys tied the nuptial knot at a temple. Residents of Bangalore say that, according to Hindu scriptures, marrying donkeys helps usher in good monsoons. Good rains are crucial in India to sustain more than 70% of the billion-plus population which depends on agriculture. Needless to say, the locals went all out to appease the rain deities. The donkeys were married off in a traditional Hindu ceremony with careful attention to ritualistic details such as the right wedding attire, the perfect invitation card and the freshest flowers. Oblivious to the commotion around them, the four-legged pair wagged their tails as a traditional band played and the onlookers sprinkled them with flowers. The hundred odd guests, each of whom contributed to the marriage expenses, were later treated to a special meal prepared at the temple. As for the rains, though monsoons have hit southern India, Bangalore is still waiting for its first showers, hoping it will rain cats and dogs, but hopefully no donkeys. That brings us to the end of Animalia. We look forward to your company next time.